Yes. All right, good morning first grade. So we'll, we'll start our lesson now. So whatever you're in the middle of project-wise, Hope and Suhaini, you can just set those things aside. And I'm gonna call attendance and each one of you will stand up and say, yes, Mr. Coulter, I am here with these notes. Uh, good morning, Stone. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, I am here. Good, and stand behind your bench when you stand up. Perfect. And you can put your mask back on because then we're going to sing and say morning verse. Good morning, Kimo. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Stand up. Stand behind your bench. Behind your bench. There we go. Good morning, Hope. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, I am here. Good morning, Suhaidi. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, I am here. Good. Stand up and put the put, just leave the crayon there. That's fine. Thank you. Good morning, Layla. Are you here? And stand behind the bench. Good morning, Elon. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, I am here. Great. Good morning, first grade. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Beautiful. Let's say the morning verse and welcome the day. The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, may love to work and learn. Say it with me. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Morning has come, night is away, rise with the sun and welcome the day. I taught a new song yesterday, so some of you know it, and we're not going to sing it quite as, it's not going to be the, quite the long version we sang yesterday. We're just going to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back down six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, just one time, okay? So those of you who sang it yesterday, please sing it along with us. And when you're, and then those of you who are just learning it, just try to kind of see where you think it's going, because a lot of the things rhyme, like in a lot of songs. Okay, one and do the hand motions. One for the golden sun, two for the night and day, three for me. For here I stand, strong limbs, warm heart, and a clear, true mind, and. Four for the season, slowly turning. Five for the stars, so brightly burning. Six for the honeycomb and the bees who make the sweet, sweet honey for me. Seven for the seven stars in the sky in the days of the week as they go by. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now we go backwards. Six for the honeycomb and the bees who make the sweet, sweet honey for me. Five for the stars so brightly burning. Four for the season slowly turning. Three for me, for here I stand, strong limbs, warm heart, and a clear, true mind, and two for the night and day, one for the golden sun. Great. I think we should have done the long version because it's easier to learn it that way. That's okay. Um, now, uh, now you can sit down, and I'm going to try to teach you the, the poem about the fairies. The poem about the fairies goes like this. The fairies have never a penny to spend. Let me hear you say that. The fairies have never a penny to spend. They haven't a thing to put by. They haven't a thing to put by. But theirs is the dower of bird and flower. Let me hear you say that. 
but theirs is the dower of bird and flower, and theirs is the earth and the sky. Your turn. And theirs is the earth and the sky. The next line goes like this. And though you should live in a palace of gold, and though you should live in a, I know that you can say it, I say it and then you say it. And though you may live in a palace of gold, again, and though you should live in a palace of gold, or sleep in a dried up ditch, or sleep in a dried up ditch, you could never be as poor as the fairies are, you could never be as poor as the fairies are, and never as rich, and never as rich. Since ever and ever the world began, since ever and ever the world began, they danced like a ribbon of flame. They danced like a ribbon of flame. They have sung their song through the centuries long. They have sung their song through the centuries long, um, and, and yet it is never the same. And yet it is never the same. Last verse. And though you be foolish or though you be wise, and, and though you be foolish and, or though you be wise, sorry, one more time. And though you be foolish or th though you be wise, with hair of silver or gold, with hair of silver or gold, you can never be as young as the fairies are. You can never be as young as the fairies are, and never as old, and never as old. That's the whole poem. Okay. Um, yeah, you can draw the you can draw this one next. E. Yes, Mr. Coulter. Yes. I will tell you what to do and when. It's okay. You don't need to worry about that yet. So the next thing we're going to do, though, is uh, is welcome Auntie Jackie into the classroom. Good morning, Auntie Jackie. Good morning, Mr. Coulter. Good morning. Aloha, first grader. Aloha, Auntie Jackie. I see everyone who's here. It's great. There you guys are on the screen at home. What have I got in my hand? Are you guys going to guess? Do you remember what we were talking about yesterday? What, what did I talk about yesterday? Some of us had pieces of paper and crayons. What was it that we were working on yesterday? Do you need a hint, a reminder? Okay. What? Leaf rubbings. Yes. And the leaf rubbings, you could do them at home or in classroom. And my paper ripped because my paper was a little wet. Yes. did it? So you took your leaf rubbing and you learned about the leaves and then you even decorated your garden box with it? That sounds very nice. I hope I get to see that someday. Will you be a little more quiet with your rolling around over your little ball? Kimo, don't roll that around too much because it's kind of noisy. Thank you. It's not very noisy, but it, it, if, the, if this computer is picking up the sound, the children at home might not be able to hear us well. Okay, what do you think I have in my pot since we were just talking about it? Me? Yes, thank you. I, I, this morning I woke up, I was very hungry. I, I ate a very early dinner and I was, I was dancing around my house last night and then I went to bed and I kind of woke up so hungry. So I went out in my garden because every morning I check on my garden and the new plants that I planted were starting to put off enough leaves that I could pick some and make my breakfast. So I'm, as I was in my garden picking the leaves and my kitty cat was running around and the chickens came through. We don't even have chickens ourselves, but 
they have us. Who has chickens that runs around their yard? Mm -hmm. You don't even get the eggs? Uh, I, don't, I don't get the eggs. You can get the eggs? Nice. My chickens, they own me. I don't even know where the eggs are and they just come. And the rooster, right? They come strutting through. Um, I think if you're raising your hand, what um, do you want to say? So, every fifth grown um, a mango tree, you maybe had a picture of it? Yes, one of our students here in the classroom is telling me that her sister grew a mango tree, is starting to grow a mango tree, and their mom sent me a photograph. And in the photograph, the thing that I could notice the most were the leaves. So, today is a good day for leaves. So, in my pot, I have leaves that I ate for breakfast that I wanted to show you. Does anybody know what this leaf could be? Is that a Oh, you know, this could be tricky for kids who aren't even seeing this up close. So, I'll just let you know. This leaf reminds me of a paddle. Doesn't it remind you of a paddle? Yes. This has a strong, strong white stem that is juicy and white. We call this bok choy. I'm going to just put one leaf on each kid's table here so you can look at it. Usually in class we pass things around, but we're not doing that these days. This leaf is another leaf. What's different about this leaf, you guys? Can you see the color in it? Yeah. And it even has a few freckles. That is the leaf from the beets. When the beets are young, their leaves are very fresh and delicious. Here is another leaf. Um, from Cousins with the Beat. This one is Cousins with the Beat, but it's different yet. Do you notice how different that one is? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you see how it's got like rumples and puckers in it, like a balloon when you, when you take some of the air out of the balloon. This is a leaf from Cousins with the Beat, and that one's called Swiss Chard, or Chard. Chard. I've never seen that before. You never saw it? I'm glad you're getting the chance. Here's another leaf. This is a small one. It's got ruffles on the sides, yeah? It's a little more firm. This is from a plant that is kind of now very popular called kale. Yellow, I don't kale. You like kale? You love kale? I want you to rub these leaves. I want you to smell the leaf. What are you thinking about when that happens? I have a leaf here that is very puckery. Some people call this, I don't know why they do, but you might know. They call this one dinosaur kale. Now, it's cousins with that other kale I just showed you, but its edges are like, what would you say? You guys, think of a word that you would say about this leaf, and I'm going to give you this one to hope. Think if you could come up with a word for that one. Yes. Rough. Did you run your finger on it to see that it was rough? But it looks rough. That's great. Thank you. And this one, it's like tissue. It's more thin. And it has little yellow freckles on it. You see that? Does anybody know why it has yellow freckles on it? Stone. just guessed that it could be a caterpillar and I said yes because the leaf is more than what we could see it's layers so there is a little insect in there making trails in between the layers and they call it the leaf miner just going through the layers looking all right I would like you guys to take a look at your leaves right now I'm going to show our friends this leaf when I was coming along to pick this leaf something came in here and surprised me not only were there leaves on my plant, but there was this cute little, can you see that? Flower. This is the beginning of the flower inside this leaf. And so this plant is telling me something. It's kept putting on leaves and leaves, and then it showed me this flower. So Mr. Coulter, what do you think is happening when the leaf starts showing, the plant starts showing you a flower? I think it's considering it's time to make seeds. That's what I think. What do you 
do you think of that? And this, this leaf, look at it, it's a little bit pointy. It came from the same plant of this one. These, are, these leaves have been here for a little while, they're nice and round like a paddle, and then as it starts to make the flower, the leaves become pointy. Auntie Jackie, I don't know, I'm just crazy about plants and leaves. I notice these kinds of things and then they teach me. So I pick the flower, I'm gonna put this in my stir fry. I have another leaf here that smells great. So this is a leaf that I often use to like make a flavor with my other leaves. Sometimes I'll make a, here's my lettuce. lettuce. I got this from a farmer. Look how wispy that one is. And then sometimes I'll put my flavorful herbal leaf in side and wrap it up. I have seen many kids at the Kona Pacific School do that in the garden after we wash them really well. We put them in a little herbal sandwich. Take a look at your leaves in your lunch. Take a look at your leaves on your desks today. Take a look at the leaves wherever you go because they seem to be everywhere, yeah? Yeah. I have one more question for you. Is this a leaf? No. No? Did this plant, did this piece of plant, this piece of the plant, did it have a leaf? Did the leaves come with the plant? No. This came off a plant and I picked it. And this fruit is a tomato. The reason why this fruit was able to form was because the leaves, the leaves were doing a really good job. And on the tomato plant, they put their seeds inside this fruity package. We can't have the fruit without the leaves. I'm allergic to leaves. Are you allergic to your, your, your this? I'll wash it when I'm done. You guys, Hemo had this really cool, I always figure out this just different. <laughs> it's reversed on the screen, you guys. So he has this very cool beeswax ball. And I think some of the students at home have a beeswax ball. And here's my tomato fruit. One makes a sound. Thank you, Jackie. Um, that, that, that beeswax ball was a, was a golden sun because we started with the number one, and one is for the golden sun. And other things that there's only one of in the whole wide world, like, like you, there's only one of you and one golden sun. So that's why we did that. And I'm wondering what the name of that tomato is. Is that a sun gold? A sun is actually called sun gold tomato. Mm -hmm. I have a gold tomato. You have a gold tomato. You might. These are delicious. We, we could really enjoy all these things, and we will. And we have one student raising her hand, so I'm going to ask, let's see what question she has, and then I'm going to go. Yes. Oh, some children thought this beeswax looked like a tomato. It sure does. But then if you look a little closer, you see the bumpies and you can hear. Can't really make that sound. If you know me and if you've come into the school garden, I'm going to invite you to do the same thing that we do in the school garden. Sniff it, smell it, touch it, wonder about it, ask some questions, stay still and peer inside. Are there any sweat bugs in this one? <laughs> I will say goodbye, but I think we have one more question. These are great questions, yes. Um, can we do leaf rubbings with this? You may do leaf rubbings with them when, it, when we have the time. Mr. Coulter's gonna move to the next thing. I'm gonna ask you to notice about your leaf rubbing. What happens with these leaves? The ones that we like to eat? What happens when you leaf rub them? They're a little different than the harder leaves, but you'll find out. All right, Mr. Coulter, thank you much. Thank you much. I'm going to wash this and bring it back to you, okay? Bye, Get your mask yeah. Oh, and my mask. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Wait, do you keep it this? You can keep the leaves that I gave you. Yes. I washed them already, so you can, like, chew on it. Put your mask on and
turn to the person behind you, if you're in the front row, and tell them something about that you noticed about leaves. And then the other person in the back row can tell the person in the front row. So front row, turn around and face the back row. With your mask on, turn around and face the back row. And one of you can say something. What if you can have a conversation about leaves. Like, what leaves do you eat? What leaves do you like to eat? How about that as a conversation? Just go ahead and tell her. You can talk. Go ahead. Tell, tell him what leaves you grow on your farm. Tell him. Tell him. Look at him when he talks. Here we go. And I know you also grow vegetables and things at your farm, so you tell her and she can tell you what you eat, what kind of leaves you like to eat. Tell her. Tell, tell him. talking to her right now, right? So, Haley, what kind of leaves do you like to eat? Did you tell Hope? You did? Okay. Yes. All right. This is my, this is my, this is my... That this means time to face and look at me again. All right, now we're going to go back over to our, oh, we didn't do our day and date. Does anyone know what day it is today? No. Who knows, one second, who knows what day it is today? Wednesday. Yesterday was Monday. Tuesday. Tuesday. T-U-T, with an E at the end, twos. S, making a Z sound, twos, D, you can say it with me, D-A-Y spells day, D, say it together with me, A-Y spells day, Tuesday, and I put a comma, and then I put the month, who knows what month it is, who knows what month it is, is it, uh, go ahead, it's November, you should know that because it's your birthday month. No. N O spells no. Say that. N O spells no. No. V E M B E R. Sometimes if um, sometimes if somebody's not listening to you very well and you've already told them no, and they think that you're they're gonna try to convince you to say yes, then they just say, listen. N-O spells no. That means like, no, no, no. You're not listening to me when I'm saying no. So sometimes you have to tell them, N-O spells no. Yes? Start right here and go straight down. All right. November, hey, yesterday was November 16th. So what is, raise your hand if you know what day today is. If yesterday was the sixth, raise your hand. Yes? The 17th. And how do I make a 17? Will you tell me how I make a 17? A one, and then a seven. Some people put a little extra tail on their seven. Um, it's November 17th, and who can tell me what year it is? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you know what year it is. What's the, what do I put at the bottom? Yes? 2020. And how do I make 2020? What numbers do I write? Two. Two. Zero. Raise your hand. Yes, Hope? Um, zero. Okay, who knows what's next? Come on. What? A what? There's too much talking. Another two and then another zero. Two zero two zero makes twenty twenty. So today's date is Tuesday, November seventeenth, two thousand twenty. Say that with me. 
Today is Tuesday, November 17th, 2020, or you could say 2020. All right, now I see the 16 here, but I don't see the 17 there, and I'm wondering what you think it might be. So can everybody see this? Yeah. Up here I see one cookie and one bear. I see a cookie broken into halves, into two parts, and that's what those circles are for. So Hope and uh, Layla, can you figure out a way, how do you draw this line exactly in the middle? Without, there's a trick to it. How will you draw this line exactly in the middle, like that? What would you do to your paper first before you draw the line? A line, side to side, but how do you know where to draw the line? I can draw it pretty well. Ilan, will you tell them since you were here yesterday? What should they do? You can just tell them without showing them. You fold the paper in half with the two ends. So Hope and Layla fold that one of those one of those circles in half. Fold it right in half, just like you're gonna make a there you go. And then what? Whoops, hold on, you're talking. Raise your hand, Suheri, because you wanted to tell them something else. Yes, Suheri? Um, when you fold it like this, um, you fold it like um. And then you have to fold it the other way to make quarters, don't you? Well, first of all, what I'd like you to do is now unfold it and draw the line along the fold. And then you will have something that looks like this. And you can then copy this. Can you see that over here? You put a... All right, and then we had two dogs. Each dog ate half a cookie. And then we had a cookie broken into how many parts? Four parts. And we call those fourths. And then we had how many mice each had, each had one fourth? Um, four mice each had one fourth. Now we're switching to sandwiches. We have one sandwich and one bear. And the story goes like this. Once there was a bear and he ate a whole sandwich all by himself. That's the silly story. And then we have a sandwich and we cut it into two parts. Yes? Okay. We have a sandwich and we cut it into two parts. And what's the story on that one? La. Um, on the pizza one? No, I'm talking about the story about this sandwich right here and those two dogs. Tell me a story. Um, the two dogs. Good, I like that. The two dogs ate a sandwich, spit the pork into, into two pieces, and then let's let's not do one thing at a time. So two sand, two dogs, each had half a sandwich. What happens over here? What do we what do we see in this picture? And hope draw the line down the middle of your cookie. Um, I, don't see it. I don't see the line. Draw. Uh, I need to... Now you need to draw it. Draw the line. See how the see how that cookie looks right there? Draw that line. But I don't have a pencil. You have crayons. Yeah, and I did it in yellow. I don't mind what color it's in. Here's your pencil. Draw the line and then write, and then you're gonna write like this. So you have a you have a circle, you have a line, and then over here it says one. And there's a two, and that's because there's this is one part out of two parts all together. And over here we have one half, which is one part when there's two when it's cut into two pieces. This is one of them, and that's one of them. And the bottom number means how many pieces that cookie got broken into. Just do exactly what this exactly what's on that cookie right here and right there. Copy that. I draw that Copy that. Yep. Okay. So now we have a sandwich cut into four parts. Where did I put that? Um, a sandwich cut into four parts. By the bear. Huh? Where'd this one go? By the bear up. No? And a cookie went there. 
That's not the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for the sandwich. So, Haley, did you you didn't do that part either yet? Did you cut those those out there? I think there's some scissors in your desk. Yes, that's exactly right. And the sandwich cut cut into four pieces, which I lost. And oh, it's up there. Oh, that's what you're trying to tell me. Ha ha. That's silly. All right, now somebody tell me a story. About this, Kimo. Once there was a, what is that? A what? A sandwich. A sandwich. And it was cut into how many pieces? Four. Four. And who ate one, each one ate one fourth? Rats. Rats or mice. Rats or mice each uh -huh. ate one fourth of the sandwich. And you see um, Hope and Hope and uh, Layla. And then I want you to do again. I want you to take this and fold it in half, just like you did the first one. And then do the same thing on the other one. And I want you to make this. Good, Hope. Now you're going to do the other one. This one is going to look like this. Okay, so fold it just like you did that one and fold it a second time so that it looks like a piece of pizza, a big piece of pie, maybe. Pie. All right. Then we got one whole pizza and one bear ate the whole pizza. And then we had, what did you see here, Stone? Can you tell me the story of, of this one? What do you see, Stone? Once there was one pizza cut into two halves and there were two dogs that ate it. Is that how you said that? Good. Perfect. That's what I'm saying. Now, uh, Layla, if you will come up and see what's behind this. But first I want you to guess. What do you think is behind this one? You think it's going to be what? A pizza cut into four halves. A pizza cut into four parts. Fourths. Cut into fourths. That's why we call them fourths, because they're cut into four. What do you think? You think you agree with that idea? OK, let's check. Next time you put your mask on when you come up. Yep, yep. Great. That's today. That's Tuesday. And why? <laughs> You were right. You were very much right. Yes, and now the 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 one looks like this, right? And there's a four underneath it, and there's a one on top of this, and a one on top of that, and a four underneath the other two sides. So it looks like a four. So this one you have to fold one more time. So fold that again. Very good. That's that. Um, now, who remembers the story from yesterday? Ilan, and, and you were watching the lesson yesterday from home. So what would you say is like a key word from yesterday's story? Um, like what would remind other people of what the story was? Um, um, old lady. An old lady. like a gingerbread man. Very good. That's a very good observation. It reminds me of the story of the gingerbread man. So there was an old lady. 
Ilan's told us, and she made a dumpling and it rolled down a crack and she found herself in another world, didn't she? I have to plug in the computer. And so then what happened, Ilan? Or maybe, maybe Layla could take it over from there. Layla, what, what happened next in the story from yesterday? One second, one second. Kimo, can you please don't mix singing now because she's speaking, so let's listen to what she's saying. She saw a stone statue. And then the stone statue. Shh. Don't go down the world. There's a stone statue. There's an evil witch, right? She's eating people. Is that okay? So there's an evil witch that eats people, and then what? Then what happened? She thought it was funny, didn't she? Yeah, and she thought it was really And then she, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, and then she went back to her world, and she came to another statue, and this statue was like, oh, don't, 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 don't go down more the hill, or else there's an evil witch who's gonna, who eats people. And she was like, ah, ha, ha, ha. And then she just went more down, and then this statue, Great. That, that was a great, that was great. So she used her as a slave or a cook, right? And she did promise the Fizo, the, or that's actually a Jizu, Jizo, Jizo. I looked it up in a different, I looked it up, I couldn't find, my book calls it Fizo, but I think it's Jizo. And uh, it means like a god, a statue of a god. And the Oni is not, is not really a witch the way we think of it. The Oni is like a demon, troll, like horns and a scary face. Yeah, not like, not, like a wick, not like a witch the way that we think of them. Do you remember what happens next? No? Do you remember what happens next? I was there. What happens next? The, so the, if you can take your mask off so we can hear your voice. So the, 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 the Oni the demon ha took the old lady to his house. His house. And then what happened? Cooking, right. And what did he give her that was so special to make the rice? A spell? Something magical. A wand? A what? A paddle. A, a, paddle. a paddle. It was a magic paddle for, what was it for? Stirring food. Stirring the rice. And what was magic about it? Does anyone remember what happened? So Alan's going to chime in again. Yes, Alan? Um, and if you stir the rice with it, Take your mask on so we can hear you really well. If you start the rice with it. Uh huh. And the. the you put what's you put only what? How much in there? One grind of rice, rice, and then if you stir it with just that one grain of rice, it will turn into eventually a billion. Yeah, it it goes from one grain to two grains. Show me two fingers like this. And then it turns into four grains, and then it doubles again and turns into eight grains, and then it doubles again and becomes 16. Wait, just show me four fingers. So here's four, there's eight and eight, that's 16. And then it keeps on doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling, and pretty soon it's millions. Or 2,000. 2,000, yeah, and then millions eventually. There's a whole bunch of Onis, and they're really big. And they're big troll demon characters, and they eat a lot. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of them, and they need a lot of food. So she does that. She works for them for a long time. Yes? Oh, when we go home? <laughs> uh, when school is over at 12 o'clock. So after the play, or maybe go walking in the forest, and then we'll come back and have another lesson, and then we go home. Well, first we have to eat our snack after main yeah. lesson. 
So let's finish main lesson and then we can have a snack. All right. So, well, I have bananas to give. All right, so, the Odi. Oh, yeah. So then the old woman, then what happens next? Do you remember? Anyone want to say what happens next? She decides she's not so happy there anymore and she wants to run away. And she goes to run away. And? And why is she laughing? Why are they laughing? Why are the Onis laughing? Because I think it's so funny that she's in the mud. Yeah, she's she's well she's she's got her paddle and she turns around and she shakes the paddle with them, she makes all kinds of crazy faces. You guys wanna do that? Shake your paddle at the Oni and make all kinds of crazy faces. And the Onis start laughing and laughing so hard that they <laughs> the old lady making faces at them that they that they um they open their mouths and all the water, what happens? And when yeah. all the water falls out, she um, walks into that crack and, and she goes she, on home. Yeah, and she makes, she's rich because she um, she can make lots of rice with mashed potatoes and dumb beans. Yes, great. And, and happy for happy. So we told that story yesterday and then we do the, did this main lesson drawing. And today I have, I have one more little thing today here I want you to do. And yesterday we also made one o'clock. We made one o'clock with this. And what I would like, yes, it is a clock. And my, and so if you were not here yesterday, take that off. Well, if you were not here yesterday, the very first thing you need to do is this. So Kimo did it already, and others did it, but you did not do it. So here's what I want you to do now. If you were not here yesterday, you're going to make me a clock. And you're going to make one big, tall, get your red stick crayon out, first thing. Get your red stick crayon out and make a one big, tall arrow pointing at the 12. Okay. One big tall arrow pointing at the 12. We need to get the crayons from the basket. The basket. And get your red stick crayon. What's that? I want you to put an arrow just like mine here. Start here in the middle and draw a big long arrow all the way up to the 12. So it's touching the 12. Yep. And it should be an arrow. So it's got two little marks on it like that. Yes. And then I want you to take another, another one. Take your blue stick crayon and make a short little tiny arrow pointing at the one like that. Just the orange is okay. Don't forget, keep on going. Can you use a can you use a red, uh, blue one? There's your blue. And then I want you to write a one at the bottom, like that. One and then two zeros. You put a one right there and two zeros after. You put a one right here and two zeros after. Like it's just one. That's a clock. A clock. And it says one o'clock. So put a one right here and two zeros right after it. Like that. A one, just like mine. I did it. And now I want you to write your name on it. And, and now everybody take your second sheet. And write your name on it, Kimo. Write your name on it. The second sheet. Write your name on it. Write your name on it. And two zeros. Because today is the two o'clock day. 
So today, you're going to do the same red arrow, the same red arrow, the same red arrow, pointing at the crow. And this time, your blue arrow, your short little blue arrow, will point at the two. And that's what I want to see on this one. And then you take your second one and make it look like that. You did it right, Hope. And that says two o'clock. Make sure your make sure your blue arrow is short. And you're supposed to do a number two now. So you're going to do that one again. So you're just supposed to look like, like this. Now it's two o'clock. I need a short arrow pointing to the two. See my blue arrow on this one? My short little blue arrow pointing at the two. And now you're going to do it again with the number two. And your two. And you put your name on both. Put your name on both sheets once you're done. Your second one should look like this. Tall, red or orange, arrow pointing at the 12. And a short blue arrow pointing at the 2. Is your name on both of those? Is your last name on both of them? I will write your last name on the board. Yes. Very good, Kimo. Last name. And then I have a story for this day. So, oh, your last name is this. Uh, I'm going to use up all, I guess I'll use upper, do you want me to write it all in uppercase letters or, or do you want me to use the lowercase letters too? Can you use uppercase? Only uppercase, yeah. Okay, you can start, Hope. Oh, van. And then you're going to leave a space right here. I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a plus. What? Can I do a backfill? Yes, on the back would be a very good place to write that. H. Okie doke. Yes. Your last name, I'm going to put in a different color. Uppercase and lowercase are just uppercase. And your last name is a long one. I'm going to write your last name and you try to copy it, okay? Uppercase and lowercase or just uppercase? Uppercase. Uh, and lower? Okay. And then you have a space here. Copy this on the back of your paper. That's a very long last name. For her. Can you practice writing your last name now? On the back of your paper? Yes, behind, on the back. Okay. And while you are doing that, Yes. Do you know how to write your last name? Okay. Your name's on the back. And you need your last name? Yeah. Okay. Back in the 
Yeah, put your name on your, your, your last name can go on the back for those, especially, you can use a pencil. Here, use a pencil. And that's okay, that's fine. Um, and I need to write Elon's last name. Elon, you are, what's your last name, Elon? You want me to write Edward Sabin Cone or just Sabin Cone? You don't have to write your middle name. Edward Sabin Cone. Okay. Uppercase and lowercase? Um, or just uppercase. Uppercase only. Okay. Edward. That. So write that. And then you're going to write. Anybody else can be different? No, you're going to copy it. I'm going to copy it. Go ahead. Do you have a pencil? Um, no, but I don't need one. Okay. That's a lot of writing. Okay. So you can um, write it on both papers. So write your first and last. Your last name is on both? Great. Okay. And, and Kimo? I want you to write your last name. All right. Oh, yeah. You got the chemo, so I want you to write your, your real first name, which is James. I want you to copy that. And I want you to copy this. Okay? That's your last name. Today, the last thing I'm going to do is tell you a story about um, Well, first I want to ask you a question. No, I'm going to ask, tell you the story first. Okay, so long, long, long ago, bear was the strongest of all the animals. So the strongest of all the animals was bear, and he loved the night best of all. He didn't really like the daytime. And he, so he made it it was always night. And all the other animals that liked the night were very happy. But the animals that liked the daytime were not so happy. Like mongooses like the daytime, most of the birds like the daytime, um, but rats like the night, just like the bear does. I'm trying to think what else in Hawaii. Oh, bats like the nighttime, just like the bear does. Um, cats kind of like the night, or they like it in between night and day. Owls like the night. What do you want to say, Elon? Um, raccoons. raccoons. Anybody else can think of an animal that likes the day or the night? Yeah, raise your hand. Possums, Possums like the night? night, I think so, yeah. They're noc nocturnal. Black panthers probably also like the night. Yeah, that's right, because they hunt at night. But there are many animals that like the day much better, like rabbits and... Um, Groundhogs and uh, dogs, butterflies, um, and many other things that like the daytime much better. Um, so, so they they discussed whether they should have a dance party to see who could do the best dance, so that that person would win whether it was day or night. And they tried that for a while, but they couldn't. They couldn't decide who was the winner because everyone was a good dancer. And then um, the squirrel noticed something. The squirrel really likes the daytime and was really scared at night. Um, scared of owls, probably. And um, squirrel saw someone who Elon just mentioned, saw a raccoon coming up into the meeting to discuss the matter. And he, squirrel noticed that raccoon, she has what kind of tail? Does anyone know what a raccoon tail looks like? What does it look like? It's, it has like the black stripes and the gray, and then at the end it's just like a big purple black. Black, gray, black, gray, black, gray, alternating. 
and then at the end a big black fuzzball. I know what it's called. What? It's called a pattern. A pattern, that's right. A pattern. A pattern of red or white, gray, or gray, black, gray, black. Yes, Sunidi? Thank you for raising your hand. Okay, go ahead. It's right back there. Put your mask on first. Yeah, and you can take it off when you're in the bathroom if you want to, of course. All right, so Squirrel got up and she told everyone, said, look at Raccoon's tail. Black, gray, black, gray, black, gray. It alternates in a pattern, as Hope said, pattern. Um, that's a good word. And that pattern gave Squirrel the idea that Day and night should also alternate between day and night, day and night, day and night. And all the animals loved it. Bear did not like it. And just as Squirrel was jumping up into the tree to run away, Bear reached out and scratched Squirrel's back. And there's some squirrels that still have this zigzag pattern of where Bear scratched the first squirrel ever so long ago, back and the great, 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 ever so many great grandparents of those squirrels and bears of today were living. Yes, Hope. I know what pattern called because I always, um, at Pennsylvania, I always, um, my grandma always used to paint my nails. And so, and she always said, and I said, like, can I have a, like, red, blue, red, blue? And then she called, like, yeah, a pattern. P A T T E R N. Pattern. Pattern. Can you say pattern? Pattern. Yes, pattern. Good. Yeah, pattern. And she's got a polka dot pattern on her dress, doesn't she? And I've got a pattern of stripes this way and stripes that way. And when you have stripes this way and stripes that way, they have a special word for that pattern. It's called plaid. Yeah. All right. So, and this is a kind of like a pattern too, isn't it? This is a pattern, in a way. Yeah, it goes whole cookie, one animal. Half an a cookie cut in two parts, two animals. Cookie cut, cut in four parts, four animals, and then back to one. So it's like one, one. Two, two, two. One, one, two, two, four, four. Kind of like the rice went from one to two to four. One, two, four. And then we went back to one. One, one, two, two, four, four. One, one, two, two, four. Four. What's going to be next? Yeah. Four, like you said. Four rats or mice, yeah. All right, where were we? Okay, so now it's the end of lesson, so I'm going to do a number two drawing. We'll do that tomorrow on the lesson, but right now we need to stop because it's already 10 o'clock. So very good work today. And uh, I will uh, will go ahead and do the two less the two drawing tomorrow. All right. Some people need to get a little more sleep. <laughs>